Hello and welcome to Tommy Talks TV. I have one singular goal with this show and that is to help you make smarter decisions so that you can have better relationships. I'd like to start as usual by saying a very big thank you. Thank you for all your likes and your shares and your comments on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube. I really, really appreciate you because you're helping us spread the message further faster. So thank you very much indeed. Now today I've got another one of your questions and it goes like this. I am engaged to a very hard-working man. However, I make far more money than he does. And it worries me because even though I'm a giver, I get scared that I may become the breadwinner when we get married. You know, a woman would like to be provided for. I also get confused because I can see his hard work and positivity. He gives me little gifts even though I give him more. But occasionally, I ask myself if I can do this. I watched my mom get stressed while providing for us. Even though my dad was always hard working, things usually didn't click for him. So my mom took the toll. I don't want that for myself. Besides this financial challenge, my fiance is a very good man. What should I do? Now, this is an excellent question. I think there are two separate issues here that we need to consider. First is the fact that your fiancé earns less than you do now. And then on the other hand is your fear that he will always earn less than you do. So let's deal with the fact first. Now, realistically speaking, what are his financial prospects? I think that's the first question you need to ask yourself because financial increase is not just a function of hard work. Hard work is incredibly important and without it, there can be no enduring financial success. However, you need to remember that financial increase is also a function of smart work or what the Bible calls wisdom. So your fiance clearly has the hard work piece in place. The question is, does he have financial wisdom? And that's one thing you need to think about. Is he prudent in his financial decisions? Is he applying his energy in the right direction to increase his financial stability? Because you see, sometimes people work hard, but they are working hard on things which have limited potential for increased resources over time. Or they may be just, you know, chasing big projects, you know, which have no foundation in reality. So that's the question you need to ask yourself. You know, financial wisdom is critical and it requires that we correctly analyze the future of anything that we're applying ourselves to today. And, you know, it requires that we are honest enough to recognize when what we are doing is obviously a dead end. Sometimes people have a challenge with accepting that because maybe, you know, it's a project or something they've been doing for so long, you know, and they're so used to it. They're so invested in it. But you see, um, a person may like to call themselves a business person when they're introducing themselves to you. But are they really doing business or are they just chasing shadows? You know, so he's got to be able to be honest about, you know, ab about what exactly it is that he's pursuing. And you must be honest with yourself about what he's pursuing because a wise person should be scanning the horizon continually, you know, looking for concrete opportunities which God is making available. And it takes wisdom, wisdom to make money, not just hard work. I love this scripture in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 10. It says, if the axe is dull and he does not sharpen its edge, then he must exert more strength. But wisdom Wisdom to sharpen the axe helps him succeed with less effort. I think this scripture just says it all, to be honest. You know, if we're trying to do things with, with you know, with a blunt instrument, it makes the work much, much harder. If the axe is dull, if we're not sharpening our skills, then it makes the job much, much harder. So in other words, if we don't sharpen our skills and our perception, we will continue to labor with little impact. So that's the place of financial wisdom. Financial wisdom is critical. So ask yourself the question, does he have financial wisdom? Now, if he does have financial wisdom and there are prospects in what he is doing, then, you know, this probably means that what he's going through right now is just a phase in his financial development. And that is where the favor of God comes in, because if he works hard, you know, and he has a vision and he applies financial wisdom, there is no telling where the favor of God can take him over time with your support. So do not make a, you know, a permanent decision based on what may be a temporary condition, because situations change. So if he's 
heading in the right direction, his financial condition will change with God's favor. And, you know, you've got to come to terms with that. So those are the facts of the situation. Now, let's talk about the other aspect, you know, which I mentioned, which is the aspect of your fears. Because, you know, how you feel about the relationship is so important. And, you know, fear is a feeling. I respect the fact that you are honest about your fears. Um, However, you do need to confront your fears because... You cannot make wise decisions on on the basis of fears. You know, I can understand your concerns given your family background, but your fiancé is not your father. So don't compare him to your father. That will always be a a mistake. Don't allow the fear of the past to dominate your your decision making for for the future. Um, Learn the lessons from the past. Take the instructions from the past. But don't let fear of financial insecurity consume you. Because, you know, when you think about it, Ultimately, from a scriptural perspective, ultimately, God is your provider. And that is what you must always remember. Your husband can only be a channel. You know, as a couple, you should work together as a team to provide for the family, trusting God for his favor on your efforts. But you see, if you, you know, as a woman, if you limit your provision to the human capabilities of your husband, then you'll be shortchanging yourself. You know, you've got to look to God first and look to God always. Don't make your husband an idol. You know, God will use him as an instrument to bless you, yes, but, you know, ultimately, at the end of the day, God is your provider. Now, lastly, let me say this. The respect that you have for your husband, if you choose to marry this man, should not be tied to how much he earns or whether or not he earns more than you do. And that's really important because there are women who fall into this trap. You know, they marry a man primarily because he is earning more than you know, they are earning before marriage, but then they find themselves completely unprepared for difficult or unexpected situations like, you know, their husband loses his job or he has a financial setback, you know, while they're married. I mean, these things happen. That's the reality of life. These things happen. So the question is, should respect go out of the window because of that? You know, should a woman leave her marriage because, you know, at that particular point in time, her husband is finding it difficult uh, to, to provide? Evidently not. You know, which goes back to what I was saying earlier about, you know, hard work and financial wisdom. You know, if you marry a man that has both, he's working hard, you know, he's he's pushing himself, he also has financial wisdom, he's doing his best, you know, you'll be able to respect him as a person and support him through any financial challenges that he may face until, you know, things turn around again. So, you know, what I'm saying to you ultimately is this, you must be prayerful about, you know, making a decision to marry this man. You say that beside the the financial challenges, he's a very good man, Um, you know, and there's more to happiness than financial provision. So in some marriages, you know, the money is flowing freely, but the man's heart is not with his wife, Um, you know, and they, they, they still have struggles as well. So ultimately, if you are prepared, you're, you're, you know, you're convinced, you're persuaded in your heart that he's a man after God's heart and, you know, that he will love you and care for you as the scripture commands. If you're convinced that, you know, he's visionary and that he's hardworking and that he's open to financial wisdom, then what I will say to you is this, trust God, you know, trust that God has your future. In, in his hands, and that he would take care of both of you. Well, I hope this has helped you. If this has helped you, then please leave me a message on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube, or wherever it is you're watching. And if you've got a question you'd like me to answer, then head on over to tomitalks.com forward slash ask, and I'll answer your question next time. See you next time. Bye-bye.